So one angle here is the U.S. should prepare for a Ukrainian government in exile, much like Poland and other countries in World War II. That, according to Robert O'Brien, who's a former national security advisor, President Donald Trump, and our great friend. Um, Robert, welcome back. I mean, I think you're right. We should prepare for that. Zelensky is on the so-called kill list. You're really the only person that's thinking along these lines. Tell us some more. Well, one of the things we need to deter Putin, and we don't know if this move into the Donbass is his way of climbing down because he already controlled the Donbass region and Crimea. Uh, so the Russian special forces have taken on the, off their little green men uniforms and put on their actual Russian military uniforms. They're now claiming to be peacekeepers. Mm. And so we don't know if this is Putin climbing down from an invasion of Ukraine or if it's him gearing up for a further invasion of Ukraine. So we still have to work very hard at deterrence. One way to deter him is to let him know that. If he goes and takes Kiev and puts a puppet in, which he's done in other countries, we're not going to recognize his puppet. We're going to recognize Zelensky and his cabinet members, and they're going to go set up at uh, uh, maybe not at Claridge's hotel like the uh, uh, the folks did in, in World War II, but he's going to go set up a, a government in exile in London or Warsaw. Mm. He's going to keep the U.N. seat. He's going to keep the multilateral seats. They'll keep all the embassies around the world. And we're only going to deal with the legitimate elected government of Ukraine. We're not going to deal with a Putin puppet, whoever he installs. And, and that would create a lot of problems and a lot of headaches for Vladimir Putin moving forward because he would have taken the country, but we'd refer to it as occupied Ukraine and, and treat it as an occupied country. And that's, that's not what he wants. Are you retailing this? Because I think it's a great thought. I know it's a contingency and it's nobody's first choice. But are you retelling this around? Because I think I think you're right on target here. That's the kind of thing we have to think about. Well, we're not going to deploy troops to Ukraine, and no one's calling for that. But we do need to, to take every step necessary to, to convince Vladimir Putin that, that moving into the, the rest of the, the country and, and taking Kiev is a very bad idea for, for him, for the Russian people. Uh, but it's also bad for us. And so he needs to understand that there will be a heavy price to pay if he, if he moves further. And... Uh, I was pleased to see some of the sanctions that were installed today, but I think this is a type of sanction that would be would, would really make them second guess their strategy of, of coming in, putting in a puppet, and then hoping that people will just acquiesce to whoever he selects to be the new president of Ukraine over time. If we really stand up a Ukrainian government in exile with our expats and their uh, and refugees, it'll make it very difficult for him to ever consolidate control over the country. You know, after. Biden's announcement of the sanctions today, the Russian stock market went up six and a half percent. I mean, I think there were very weak need sanctions, sanctioning Donetsk. And I mean, how about this? Stop Russian sales. Stop the sales. Stop the oil. Stop any sales transacted in dollars, whether you use the SWIFT system or whether we just sanction their major banks and their central bank, which we can do. We've done it before. We did it in our administration with uh, Iran and some others. That's what I'd like to see. But, uh, you know, Biden didn't get that done today, Robert. Well, uh, what I've been advocating is that we, have, we just decouple Russia from the, the free world economy and you, you kick them off swift and mm -hmm. you, you just don't trade with them. You don't do any, you don't do any business with them and you, you, you make them a, a total uh, dependent on the People's Republic of China. And, and Vladimir Putin's not going to like being Xi Jinping's junior partner. Uh, but, you know, what, what I'm, I'm hoping is that those sanctions are in reserve so that if Putin decides not to stand down, and I hope, I hope this is the first step that he's taking to withdraw, but if, if it's not and, and he's going to move forward, then we have to do exactly as you suggest and what I've been talking about for the last week or two, and that's a total decoupling of Russia from the free world in the West. And, and, and that's, that's a, that, that'll cause real pain for, for Putin, for his oligarchs, and, and for the people of Russia. And part of that, Larry, is... You know, there's all these Russian yachts in San in San Tropez and St. Bart's yep. and villas all over the place. And, yep. You know, hundred billion dollar homes in Belgravia and soccer teams. That's all got to be swept up for you know, kind of trading with the enemy act type uh, yep. things we did in World War II, and, and, and let those oligarchs litigate for the next five or ten years to try and get their property back. But in the meantime, it should all be seized. Yeah, I really like that. Um, just one last thought, Robert O'Brien. China kind of backed off. They didn't really support the. Um, Invasion. They seem to take our position, or they were closer to our position, the U.S. position, than the Russian position. What do you make of that? Well, look, the Chinese and Russians are, they have no long-term interest together. They they have short-term interest in trying to defeat and, and undermine the United States, and and they both see an opportunity over the next couple of years to to advance their interest. But keep in mind that Russia controls thousands and, and, and millions of acres of 
a property that the Chinese believe is theirs that was taken from China in the 1865 Treaty of Peking. Hmm. Uh, their competitors in Central Europe. And, and the Chinese still have eyes on Ukraine as a Belts and Roads partner. So hmm. uh, it, it's a little interesting to watch Xi Jinping uh, size up Vladimir Putin. I'm not sure he's excited about Putin uh, exercising his, his power and influence in Kazakhstan and Ukraine. And, uh, and maybe the Chinese are having second thoughts. I think they're also thinking that if they invade you, uh, Taiwan on this example, that they could end up being cut off from the West and cut off from uh, selling their, their products to the free world. So. It, you know, we, 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 but we, we've got to take a real strong stand at this point to deter Putin, and that, that, will, that will help our friends in Taiwan facing yep. Xi Jinping as well. Yep, if we could, if we would, a strong stand. You're right. Robert O'Brien, thank you, sir. It's great to see you. Talk soon.